Thanks everyone. Thanks, um, thanks Crisco for chatting away before. Um, he can get a bit carried away and go over a, a bit. So, I was, actually, there was one thing that I wanted to do. I've never gotten a chance to do this before and take a photo from the front. I'll post this up later. Please tell me that's not a selfie. <laughs> it is. And we'll get to that next. Um, so I'm going to talk about automating Casper Suite. But before I start, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Vasco. I'm a system engineer. I work underneath Crisco. If he's a headless chook, I, I don't know what I am. Um, I like to put a picture up of, of myself um, in my presentation just to kind of show who I am. But a picture always tells the thousands of oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I was struggling on what picture to choose. So first one I've got up of me is family me. With, I've got Karofsky version 2.0 and 3.0 in the background. Uh, and I've got version 4.0 um, due to be released in December. Um, I've got Bogan me. Uh, they like to go out to car festivals. Um, a Bogan, for my American friends, is a redneck. So. There's, that's another side of me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got Nirvana, never mind me. I actually won a competition with that photo and won two and a half grand. Um, we've got Geeky Me. That, well, that's a selfie with, um, with um, one of my favourite um, Star Wars characters. Uh, we've got Adventurous Me. Um, anything that will drive up my adrenaline, I love to do. Snowboarding, surfing, motorbike riding. I used to race. Started racing motor motocross when I was seven years old. Um, cars, anything. And then this one is my passport photo. Um, just thought for, I'll throw it up there because it doesn't get any better than that. And that's just me all over. So let's put the um, Casper Suite into Drive and let it do things for us. Um, so how I'm going to cover it off would be, I'll start from the beginning of talking about when you deploy a, um, a device, um, in imaging a device, and then go to software deployment, and then secure, adding security things automatically. So on the imaging side of things, who has done pre-stage imaging? Or who uses pre-stage imaging still? Cool. No one. Um, I used to find this very handy. Uh, back when I was working out of school, I'd get a whole bunch of um, pre-DEP, uh, I'd get a whole bunch of um, Mac computers. And I thought, what was the fastest way to get them onto Casper Suite? And there was this feature, uh, pre-stage imaging, where you'd add the serial numbers into Casper Suite. Um, you'd set a configuration. As soon as they go into Netboot, they're imaged automatically, and they're put into Casper Suite. Um, actually, going back one, I've oh, well, you've seen the answer there. Um, a question I've got, I thought of, uh, I'd chuck a couple of these in as well. Let's say you need to automate a regular image of lab computers without Netboot, without USB, Firewire, or Thunderbolt. How would you do that? Yeah. yeah. That's all automating. Um, so yeah, uh, build a um, recovery partition with Casper imaging in there, and auto run data. Um, set it so it doesn't image 
uh, between Monday to Friday, um, and then auto run in, like reboot into the partition Saturday and Sunday. So that's auto run data. Um, user initiated enrollment. I, I know it's not uh, automating, but IT doesn't have to touch the device. You set the policies in the back end. You just give the users an address to log in and enroll your device, and it's all automated. And then we've now got the DEP, uh, Device Enrollment Program. Who here uses DEP or no one again? I mustn't be touching interesting things. Um, I've got a, I had a DEP laptop, but I couldn't connect to the wireless, so I've got the next best thing, which is a video of what happens. So the user gets their laptop, they join to the wireless, and as soon as they get past that point, they're greeted with this page saying, um, so-and-so is going to manage your computer. They create an, a computer account. And you might notice something else with this as well. Um, a lot of the steps that, that when you first get a, a Mac, they're all skipped. Um, and I can show, I'll actually switch over to Casper Suite and show you um, what it looks like on Casper Suite. So it's just to prove that that was a new machine and it is enrolled now. They're self-service. So that's DEP on OS X. What I'll do, I'll jump into Casper Suite. Uh, where are we? I'll do it this way. So if we go into computers, um, once you put a, a DEP token into Casper Suite, you get that option at the bottom there, uh, the pre-stage enrollments. You can create um, multiple pre-stage enrollments, so if, and, and I'll show you afterwards what the benefit of that is as well. Um, so let's say these are from a sales computers. We'll click onto sales. Uh, we'll just press edit. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, how's that? Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, you, you select what DEP token you use. Um, this will come up on the on the screen when they first uh, where that screen says that um, your JSS is going to manage the device now, um, and then there's an option there to make the MDM profile man mandatory and to um, disable the profile from being removed, and also the, the options where you can skip if. There's a whole group of them, um, and you wanted to chuck in the department in there um, or a room where they belong, you can chuck them in there as well. Um, same thing with purchasing and, and if you wanted to attach anything. How it looks like when you assign a device, um, you'll get a whole list uh, of all your DEP devices in there, and you have to select which ones you want to be part of that. Um, in, for naming a device, um, unfortunately with Mac you can't push out a name to it when, uh, during the DEP process, but there's, you'll notice there an asset tag where you're, you can ask your reseller to chuck in a, um, an identifier that you can use. So let's say that's a sell, going to be a sales computer, the tag can be sales01 or sales Victoria or whatever you guys works for you. So that's DEP on on Mac, let me go. I've got a, um, now, I don't like doing live demos like this. Can you guys see that all right? All right, so let's go into here. I've already joined this to the wireless. 
Um, let's click about just to see what, what is this talking about. So just information, what's going on there and who's going to administer the iPad. So we'll click on next. Um, username. So this is a um, this is asking for my LDAP credential, so it will automatically assign it to a user. So I'll put in this belongs to Tony Stark. It's not Spark. Let's see how he likes that. So I have on purpose left this uh, because I'm going to deploy uh, VPP apps to it afterwards. So I want my user to sign in. Um, what I'll do is so you guys don't steal my iTunes password. I'll just minimize that for now. And please note, this is, um, these workflows will change when iOS 9 is re released. Um, so I've signed in there. I have to agree to those terms and conditions. You can't skip that. This is the problem with live demos. You've got to wait for these things. It didn't. There we go. Um, I don't want to use iCloud for now. Um, and this is only asking me because I've signed in for my iTunes account. Um, one of the um, configuration, one of the profiles I pushed out that I want my devices, they need a passcode. So I'll go ahead and set a passcode for it. Yes. Cool. So there's my iPad. Um, and to prove that it's enrolled, there's a profile there. And if I click onto it, what do you guys see that's missing there? Exactly. Um, another thing as well, it's asking me for my password. Especially you, mate. Um, <laughs> I knew this was coming because I, I, I sat here the, the past two days haggling at everyone else. All right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> you want me to just type it for you? Yeah, thanks, eh? Yeah, you probably know it anyway. Yeah. I'll, I'll post the password afterwards. Okay, require after 15 minutes. Don't ask me again. Um, another thing as well that I wanted to show as well. Um, it's supervised as well, and it's supervised by Jam Software. I didn't, I didn't put this up, this through Configurator beforehand. I did it through, um, through DEP. Um, so let's go back into, see if it's downloaded anything else. So self service is on there, and you can already see it's loading up YouTube on onto it. Um, I know YouTube is a free app. Um, it, you might may ask, that's why I was asking for your password, but I did deploy it through VPP. Yeah, so. so that's um, pretty much a VPP, DEP and VEP. 
a live demo there. Um, how we will look into Casa Suite, I can show you guys as well. Um, same thing again, uh, BDE pre-stage enrollment. And we can add different pre-stage enrollments. And I'll show you guys, I'll mention on it again, I'll show you guys afterwards what, what the benefit is there. So yeah, you, chucking all those details again. <clears throat> you can limit here, so you can add the supervisor from here. Um, if you want to pair it, be able to pair it with other iTunes or computers or whatnot, select it there, make it mandatory so they can't skip the enrollment part. And then all these parts to skip. Um, the two important things for me was that they needed an Apple ID. They had to be put in from the start. and. Uh, a passcode as well. Um, you can add a list of names. So if you've got a list of um, uh, mobile device names you want to um, apply to the devices, you put them in there and you just uh, separate them by commas. Um, and also there is the option there, so if you wanted the naming to be serial numbers, um, you can add a prefix and a suffix to it as well. Um, so when I, while I'm speaking, you guys, there's, you kind of gather all this automated uh, stuff that I'm talking about, there's one, one thing that I'm always going back to, and I'll let you guys figure it out at the end. So the profile types when I was talking about the DEP uh, stuff, um, I was saying that you can break them up and make different profile, uh, pre-stage enrollment profiles based on sales, depend, whatever department they're going out to. You can, those can be used as smart groups. So their enrollment type can be uh, pre-stage enrollment equals sales. So then if you want to deploy software out to them after they've enrolled, you can base it on, on that smart group. After they've enrolled, if they don't have a software, you can create a smart group based on that app title if they don't have it installed. And same thing again. Um, your policies when they enroll, uh, set them at an enrollment so they get that at enrollment. That's all automating stuff. Um, another form of automation as well and I know Paul's going to be talking about this um, after, after recess, after morning tea, sorry, recess. I came from a school, and I was still in school. Um, is iBeacon integration. Um, anyone here playing around Fire Beacons? Cool. Good to hear. I hope I can influence that. Um, Let's say we've got a, a group of um, users. They're walking around with their iPads like normal users do. They're switched on. They walk into an iBeacon region. My iBeacon region, I've got it set to, they're fixed to, um, Keynote. So single app mode and Keynote. They can't do anything else. But we can change that to be pretty much any configuration profile available. So they walk into a bathroom or something like that, their camera's disabled. Or, they, or if, if they're supervised, they walk into a school, um, iMessage is disabled. It's possibilities endless. Um, same thing with security. Um, I put settings in there and they will include a fair few things. So a user walks uh, walks up to a, there's a printer over here. They're in proximity to the to an iBeacon right next to it. That will be deployed as the default. Um, they need to connect to uh, Apple TV that's in the room. That can be passed to them automatically as soon as they walk into that region. 
Um, software restrictions as well. That's another good form of automation. Um, blocking software that you don't want your users to be using. Uh, I know, um, for example, uh, uTorrent. You don't want uTorrent installed on your computer, full stop. Uh, chuck the app in there. And this app name in, in the software restriction part in Casper Suite, and it's blocked. Um, going back to the settings, I had a, a question uh, to throw out to you guys. Employees must have admin rights. Um, and even though if, if they try and push, uh, execute the uh, pseudo jamf remove framework uh, command, how does the computer still say managed? Exactly. Yep. Exactly right. I feel like an asshole. I don't have any prizes to give away. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You could could have prepared me for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. I've got some water though. Um, so yeah, um, that's another form of automation. So you users can't unenroll your devices. Um, so, if they go home, they can use uTorrent, but, yeah, and, uh, network? network Yeah, that would be good. That one at the moment, I get asked that with everyone as well. Um, the problem is if they go and change the time on the iPad, that breaks the communication to the end of the server. Right? It, it obviously changes the restriction and you go, oh, okay, why doesn't the server enforce that on the server time? But if they go and actually change the time, well, it's kind of like Kerberos, right? If they go and change the time to something ridiculous, it actually just stops the. Uh, no. Also run into issues with public holidays and student free days and forgetting to turn it off in yeah, yeah. Christmas break. Yeah. Um, I, I keep voting that up and keep adding that back to that feature request that, that has to join it as I guess as well. Well, and, and, and what I'd say is um, uh, we were talking about feature requests yesterday, and I just like to take time from that. So don't really talk a lot. I was encouraged to do that by <laughs> That's what I just had a look at, but you can't do it. The other way I've found to exclude or exclude it is it's actually by building a department that you can do a network segment to override the inventory. So if you have that kind of IP, you put yourself in that building and scope or exclude on that. There's a convoluted way. It's, it's yeah, there, there is. Yeah, I was going to yeah, just about to suggest that.
I didn't. I didn't think the single um, single user mode was a problem for me until a, a year five student figured out how to get in and figured out all my admin passwords. So that's how smart they are. Yeah, definitely. Um, what what I have next? And software patching. Um, I know we have spoken that it's still in dev. Um, I did hit up the product owner a couple of days ago. Sorry, John. Um, and I will report back that she did her job. She didn't share anything with me. <laughs> so I've got nothing. Um, once again, um, smart groups. That's, they're in there, use them. Um, a new update. Was there an update or, to Flash last night? Uh, they come out so often I, I lose track. Um, yeah, probably. Um, just type, if you create a smart group to look up the uh, Adobe Flash program on, on all your devices, chuck in the version there. Um, I think the current one is 18.0025 or something like that. Chuck that in there, and whoever doesn't have that, push it out. Um, and then there is third party tools out there as well. Um, Auto PKG. Um, Pat Chu's from uh, one of our good friends, Lockie. Uh, it, what it does is it's pretty much a script that, and he will argue this, that it's not a script. Um, it sits there, uh, you have it on self service, and you click on it, and you'll see what, up, what applications aren't up to date. And then it will bring up a term, uh, terminal right at the end and say, hey, uh, we've got updates for all this software. Uh, go ahead and install them. And then more on auto automation, we've got uh, the, the REST API. Um, anyone using the API? Cool. So using common HTTP methods to get pull post uh, put and delete the modify as, yeah, to modify the state of the JSS. Um, how you can access it, uh, your JSS URL and API. Um, we went through it yesterday um, and just uh, gave you guys a quick overview. But a, a quick question, um, another, another, another challenge. Say you've been provided a, a bunch of serial numbers of computers um, and that they've changed hands. How do you make those changes? And don't answer me one by one. I mean, going into each record and updating one by one. We've got a um, self-service app that uses complete. Yeah. Update themselves with the API. Yeah, you can do that. Another way you can do it as well is you can um, write a script um, to do a search on the serial numbers. Um, and you can update, you can update them in bulk. Who's heard of um, our events API? Yeah, um, so the difference between the uh, the REST API and the and the events API, the REST is based on pooling. So. You'll go and ask the JSS for something. Oh, has this been completed? No. OK. Has this been completed? So you're constantly asking. Where else? The events API, you register for notifications uh, based on when a JSS event occurs. And some of those, uh, the list of the um, things you can register for, you've got uh, your JSS startup and shutdown. So if there's a change in there. If mobile devices enroll or unenroll. Uh, when a push notification was sent, when a mobile device checks in, mobile device command completed, feedback, I'm not going to read all these. Uh, but a good example of what you can do, and this was, um, I, I found this on one of our uh, JNUC videos. Um, let's say a user unenrolls a mobile device. Um, it's, in a, it's not a DEP device. Uh, you can create custom code for the mobile, based on the mobile device um, unenrolled event, 
And when it happens, it will trigger an email notif notification to the user that's using the iPad saying, hey, I believe you've unenrolled uh, your device. Can you please enroll your device as at your whatever the JSS URL is? Cool? More automation stuff there. Uh, some of the uh, API resources that you can, and I, I can post these up, or if you guys want to Google, uh, or not Google, just look on, do a search on API on Jamf software, um, you'll get all that stuff there. And see people still. All right. Um, yes, bubble machines are automated now. Um, which now leads me to questions. 